Hello everyone, welcome to Onupalsar video classes. Today we will discuss some important thing regarding solid state chemistry. Existence of matter that basically depends on in which state that basically depends on the net effect of thermal energy and the intermolecular forces present in it. The solids, the molecules are more organized, their arrangements are very organized. Therefore, the stability of the solid states are very, very high. And therefore, the reactivity of the solids are very low. They are associated with very lower value of entropy. Delta S value is very much smaller. So solids basically are divided on their stability and their different arrangements that's they are crystalline and amorphous. Crystalline solids that means they are perfectly solid. A solid is a perfectly solid when it is present in zero Kelvin temperature. But when heat energy is applied then different types of motions will be developed. So randomness will be developed, kinetic energy of the molecules will be increased, therefore different types of defects will arise. So we can classify it depending on their arrangements that is crystalline and amorphous. Crystalline solids are again can be sub divided into ionic solids which are made by positively charged and negatively charged atoms. Second one is molecular solids that is solid ammonia, solid CO2 where the molecules are attached by weak type of van der Waals force. Okay. And the third one is metallic solids where positively charged kernels are surrounded by free sea of free electrons. Examples are Fe, Cu, Ag. And covalent solids are those which are made by basically non-metals like silicon carbides. And amorphous solids or pseudo solids, they may be termed as supercooled liquids because they don't have any sharp melting point. They have a range of melting point. Examples are glass starch. Okay. So crystalline solid again can be classified as anisotropic because as they have different, a perfect definite arrangement. So therefore, the properties like thermal conductivity. Uh, thermal expansion, conductivity, refractive index, they can be different in different point of views. That is why they are known as anisotropic in nature. But amorphous or pseudo solids, glass, starch, they have actually not definite shape or definite arrangement. So from any point of view, this type of properties, refractive index, thermal expansion, but Amorphous solids or pseudo solids are basically aniso they are isotropic in nature. Why they are isotropic? Because due to they don't have any definite shape in definite angles, therefore they possess same similar properties or same properties like refractive index or, or conductivity or thermal expansions. These factors would be same value. They will have same value in different directions. That is why they are known as isotropic in nature. So basically we have this system that crystal systems, I have chart, I have made a chart that is age length, axial angles and they are examples. We need to remember one trick that is C tor HMT. I repeat once again C tor HMT where C means cubic, T means tetragonal, here orthorhombic, R means rhombohedral, H means here hexagonal, M means here monoclinic and triclinic. T indicates again triclinic. So in this case, age length, to remember the age length, we also have a trick that in the first case A equal to B equal to C. But in the second case A equal to B but not equal to C. In the third case A, B, C, they are not equal with respect to each other. In the fourth case, again repetition of this, that means A equal to B equal to C, here A, B equal, but C not equal, A, B, C not equal, and the last case also we have similarity, that is A, B, C, they are not equal. Now come to the axial angles. In the first case, cubic system, 
alpha equal to beta equal to gamma and that values are equal to 90. The all three for the three cases these values are equal. But starting from the fourth problem that is rhombohedral system, alpha, beta, gamma they are equal but mind it they are not equal to 90 degree. In the next case alpha, beta equals to 90 but gamma not equals to 90. In the next case alpha, gamma 90 but beta not equals to 90. And the last case is alpha, beta, gamma they are not equal and they are not equal to 90 degree. So here you can see the examples of each system. So remember, if you remember this trick, then no angles or edge length will be problematic to you. Now basically we have the cubic crystal system. So in this case again we have simple cubic crystal, body centered cubic crystal, F centered cubic crystal. In simple cubic, we can draw the picture, we can see the picture that only the atoms are there at the corners so we have a crystal having eight corners and this one corner one atoms are shared by again eight other cells so therefore to this part it can contribute only one by eight so for simple cubic we have the per unit cell contribution equals to eight into one by eight that is one that means 8 atoms are present in this unit cell but only that is equivalent to present like 1 atom because it is shared by 8. Again for if we consider BCC that is BCC means body centered cubic. That means the if two corners of this unit cells are attached then at the intersection this atom is present. So here the contribution is pure 1 and again it has 8 into 1 by 8. Therefore, in case of BCC, the per unit cell contribution will be 8 into 1 by 8 plus pure 1. So, it will be 2. Next is our FCC. FCC means in the face center. That means we have 6 faces in a cube. So, every face center we have an atom. There, this face, this face, this face, 6 face, we have 6 atoms. So, if this is a face center, then this atom is shared by this cell and the above cell, nothing else. So, therefore, to this particular cell, the per unit cell contribution of each atom will be half. Therefore, for FCC, the per unit cell contribution becomes 8 into 1 by 8 plus 6 into half. So, it will lead to the 4. And in case of edge centered ECC or edge centered that means every edge has this atom edge centered so we have 12 edges so these atoms can be shared by 4 edges that means if it is an edge and it is a cube that means this atom can be shared by this cell the above cell the adjacent cell and the above of the adjacent cell therefore 1 by 4th will be the per unit cell contribution. So, in case of ECC or edge centered cubic lattice, it would be 8 into 1 by 4 plus again 12 into 1 by 4. 8 into 1 by 8, 12 into 1 by 4, that means again it leads to the formation of 4. So, this is basically the per unit cell contribution part. Now, we can have this in case of face centered, if it is A, if it is A, then this portion, this distance is A root 2 by Pythagoras. So, this portion in case of F6, that means R, this is also R and this is 2R. So, we have 4R equals to A root. In case of BCC, this distance equals to, this distance A root 2, this distance A, so it becomes A root 3. Therefore, 4R equals to here A root 3. And in case of simple cubic, only this distance is the edge length so here a equals to 4r and in case of edge centered it would be a equal to 4r here a equal to 2r scc and in case of edge centered it will be a equal to 4 now come to the density part that is density means we know total mass by total volume so as it is considered as cubic system therefore the volume will be a cube and if the atomic mass be m, then it should be divided by Avogadro number for 
minimum uh, to uh, find out the mass of each atom so total mass means mass of each atom into how many number of atoms are present that means m by n a into z where z is the how many atoms are present so total mass by total volume you will get in the value of density now come to the packing fractional part that is very very important in case of solid state In case of SCC, how many atoms are there? The atoms are there 1. 8 into 1 by 8, that is 1. So, atoms are generally considered as sphere. So, 4 third pi r cube will be the volume into 1 divided by a cube. And here a means 2r. Here a means, in case of SCC, a means 2r. So, here the packing fraction becomes nearly... 52.4 percent so question comes that what is the white percentage in case of SCC that would be 100 minus this percent now come to the BCC part how many atoms are equivalent that is 2 for BCC it would be 2 so therefore 4 third pi r cube into 2 divided by here a root 3 equals to 4 r so a would be 4 r by root 3 whole cube into so that would be nearly 68% and in case of FCC it would be 4 third pi r cube into how many atoms are there 4 per unit cell contribution is 4 divided by A will be here 4 r by root 2 whole cube into 100. So the void percentage of FCC that is nearly 26 percent the packing fraction is 74 so 100 minus 74 you will get the void percentage so these are some basic ideas of solid to solve the conceptual questions and numericals the next portion will be the shortest distance shortest distance in case of scc it would be a that is 2r in case of fcc shortest distance this portion is the shortest distance between three atoms but shortest distance between two atoms that would be a root 2 by 2 that would be the shortest distance in case of FCC uh, between two atoms and in case of this portion that is a root 3 equals to 4 so for BCC the shortest distance will be a root 3 by 2 for BCC the shortest distance will be a root 3 by 2 so this type of things are very very important for solid, solve the, solving the numericals and the conceptual questions. In my next video, I will definitely explain some important things about the defects and uh, conceptual questions related to this. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.